Well, howdy, 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 dear day senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this another brand new day. Yes, indeed, the sun is well, yeah, it's shining out there. Of course, it is. It's not pitch black, that's what it would be otherwise, nearly anyway. So, thumbs up for that. Definitely a good thing. As a quick aside, I wanted to mention this before I forgot because I just happened to remember. I was watching this one science show about how, <clears throat> well, show on YouTube, you know, still knowledge and all that because it's one of these uh, sponsored science things. But they're talking about how the expansion of the universe and how everything that we see is old, 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 old. Nothing that we see now is anywhere near what it is in reality. And in reality, our universe is getting more and more lonely because we are because of expansion which we know to be happening space is being created between locations but space is being created between locations faster than the speed of light so things leaving space here will never be able to reach here because space is being created faster than light can travel so that's joyous. Things are getting more and more distant. But at the same time, they were mentioning how the sphere of the observable universe, even as the actual universe becomes dimmer and farther away and harder to see, the sphere of the observable universe keeps getting bigger and bigger. So we're able to see further and further into the past as the bubble of the observable universe keeps growing and light that has been traveling all this time is now reaching into there. And then it comes in and we see it. So we're able to see more and more of the universe through time even as there's less and less of it to see. Thumbs up for that. <laughs> and so the heat death of the universe is just depressing. It makes me sad thinking about it. I mean, no point to feel sad about it, but, you know, I do. It's an ending. And endings are, are by definition, sad. So, life is life. I mean, it's trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of trillennia away before anything would ever get far enough that the universe splits into pieces and there's nothing left but hey hey what do you say past that i have had oh boy oh boy yesterday i had such a time staying awake that i largely didn't i did my recording and editing in the morning for my vlog did all of my uploading did my editing and started the rendering for my second video which you know goes live in the second half of the day and then started falling asleep as it rendered and fell asleep for couple hours kept waking up and then trying to stay awake and then falling back asleep so that was fun and then of course was able to get the video up and done get the other one started and rendering and then same thing just falling asleep so most of my day yesterday and it didn't even quit then i fell asleep further after six o'clock i spent most of my day asleep in this chair which is bad because i stopped breathing when i sleep so, thumbs up on that. I even went to bed semi-early for me and fell asleep quickly and slept. I'd slept through most of the night. A little bit of tossing and turning toward the end, but primarily I was asleep. But even with the falling asleep yesterday, it still felt like it lasted forever. Cause I'd wake up and it would be like just two o'clock in the afternoon. And because of the falling asleep, it felt like days had passed. It was so disorienting and horrible. Ah, 
This disruption of normal routine and the pressures of fight or flight with nowhere to flight and nothing to fight, it takes a toll on everybody. And this is one of the thing that's, things that is apparently happening with me. So, yay. Still trying to work on creative things. Primarily, a lot of the stuff I'm working on, working on in air quotes, is just trying to remember concepts, think on the things that I've thought before so that I don't forget, and just remembering such like that. And then, of course, little topics. I've talking about the cosmic horror pantheon and all that. One of the things I thought about last night, a good way to think about, like, I talk about the weird terms for the multiverse because they're a little bit more inclusive than such. I say, you know, there's an ung includes a universe, but, a, you know, a, the universe is at least 95% of what an ung is. But it's that extra 5%. It's the shards of this stuff. It's the thing, it's the, like the biome that we have of the microflora and microfauna that lives on our skin that makes us actually people. If you just include human cells, you're not including what we are as actual people because the extra things that live on us work symbiotically to a large degree. And so they have to be considered as part of the biome. Same thing there. A universe is 95% of an ung, but the ung is the entire biome and everything that surrounds it. Because there's the aneurysm parts that'll pop and then last is the shards that are orbiting around. There's all these minor little things. Yes, the universe is 95% of it, but the rest of it is that 5%. But an unga is the multiverse and that the one of the better ways to imagine what the multiverse looks like is to imagine like a galaxy again just a metaphor but in the middle the center of it the bright bright super dense galactic cluster that is the ungara the place where the cosmic horrors can walk on the planets like we walk on our planet here out in the dimmer areas of the arms, that is the Ungare, Ungare, and that's where reality kind of dips and bends and creaks underneath their weight. Further in the, it's kind of dim, kind of not a whole lot of stuff out here. It's very, very not dense. That's the Ungaden, that is effectively where we are. Of the 12 of the Angakira, the Gakira's children, Amagaratsu's children, they, of the 12, only four of them know of and care about life out in the Ungaden because it's the cold and dark. They can't really go out here because if they do, if they step into any Ung, it just melts down into a sea of quarks and then the quarks burn into ash and then the ash burns and then there's nothing left. There's not much they can do out in the cold and dark, so they just don't even worry about it. And then the fine little bit, that, like the heliosphere of the galaxy, that's the Ungadi which is a very, very thin and rarefied reality. And then, of course, outside that is just the Ungata, the void. But instead of stars, each one of those stars in that metaphorical cosmological map is a universe. And there are an infinite number of universes swirling like stars in these vast clouds around the multiverse gl gravitational center air quotes and then most of the unga out there because there are less than a hundred but uh, quite a few they're just that but this particular one of course has the infinite city the ungaru overlaid over the top of it like a like a placemat or a tablecloth just laid over the top 
of it. So thumbs up for that. And so I've been thinking of all the things and how these things have to exist and where they exist and what can happen and who cares about what and why others don't care and the what happens when the cosmic horrors put their attention on a particular ung in the ungara or the ungare and the heat and pressure that exudes outward from that extends outward into the Ungaden, where we would be, and what happens to those universes, those Ung, that are in those zones of heat and pressure, because the bastions of reality weaken and melt. They buckle and start to collapse. Energies and creatures either creep in or are coalesced and created from the energies that come in. So that's fun, <laughs> fun for them. That's why anything can happen and, and, and it's a good thing. And then I still think about the characters of the cosmic horrors and the young adult humanizing terms. I call it young adult stuff, but I, it's just adding a, a, that humanizing thing to something that's non-humanizable. <clears throat> making something understandable that's non-understandable. And it's all canon. Everything is canon because everything is metaphor. One of my hamsters is up in the wake. It's Dust Mop. Dust Mop is drinking. Hello, Dust Mop. He's ignoring me because he doesn't speak English. <laughs> that's so weird. Isn't that just strange? I don't understand. I mean, it could be that they have brains that are, like, smaller than a BB. You know, that could have something to do with the fact that they don't understand English. But they can and do and will come to know your voice and your tone of voice quite frequently when he's awake and I'm just talking and he's not busy. Like, right now he's drinking, so he's not going to pay too much attention. But when he's not doing much and hears my voice, he wanders over to see what's going on. So, it's a good thing. <clears throat> and then, of course, Gojira down there. I'm always just reaching down to pick her up, so that's a good thing as well. My hamsters are <coughs> all doing well, except, of course, again, for Dr. Snurf with that balding patch on his back, where I don't know. I'm hoping it's not mites. I'm still checking online for treatments for mites. I put that stuff for this antifungal. I put it on his that spot to see if that would help. I don't want him to suffer, and if I can't treat it because I can't afford to take him to a vet, then I, I don't want him to suffer. So I don't know what's going to happen right now. Hopefully it's just an old age thing, because I've also read up, and this is why it's so confusing. They talk about old age hair loss in hamsters because they that'll happen especially in male hamsters they talk about the skin getting dry and patchy and thicker and flaking as just the old age symptoms but you know what the symptoms are for mites those too <sighs> So, I don't know whether they're, it's an old age or a mites problem. And so, that's why I'm checking up on stuff and treatments and putting that antifungal. Because if it's, if it's a, it could be ringworm, I don't know. If it's old age, then there's not a whole lot I can do. If it's any other thing, hopefully I can get it treated so that he doesn't suffer. He's been a good guy, and he doesn't deserve to any pain and horror. So here's hoping. <coughs> and, swapping over to this camera, I'm opening up 24 hours worth of comments my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. Primarily, I'm quite sure most of these people are not going to see me thanking them for having left a comment. My one reaction video to Lil Peep when how I expressed total sadness at his death has exploded on TikTok and the recommendations as it's come up again. So there's a lot of comments from people that 
it's wonderful and great, but I don't think they're ever going to watch this. So that that's there are a lot of comments is what I'm saying. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. We're just not good at that. And even though I count an American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my fibro, depression, untreated ADHD, I'm sometimes lucky I can remember my name is not Rudolph P. Farquhar. Because frankly, it's not. That's really a pretentious name. Sounds like money. Oh, hi, kitty. I didn't realize she was underneath my feet. So when I turned over and around, I walked into her. Poor kitty. She's a good kitty, and I love her very, very much. Okay, calling up my Chrome. We have Paranormal Jake, thumbs up and thank you. Gently with a smile, greatly appreciate. K Rents Official, thumbs up and thank you very much. We have Joseph.005, thumbs up and thank you. We have Josh Dunn, thumbs up. Big Boy, greatly appreciated. We have I Got Autism. I hope that's not true, but if it is, that's, you know, we all play the hand for dealt. Keith Ryan, thumbs up and thank you. We have Leonard Schneebly, greatly appreciated. Gage Wingard, <coughs> my sincere apologies for my voice. Thank you very much. We have Little Fields, greatly appreciated. Dylan A, thumbs up. We have Elia Crutchfield, greatly appreciated. Appreciated. John Last, thumbs up and thank you. Joshua P. Boy, greatly appreciated. Sierra Callahan, I is probably not Sierra, but I hope I'm close. Thank you very much. And looks like Katishi, but then a zero instead of an O, thumbs up and thank you. Pygmy, how about that name? Thumbs up. We have Josh DeBasio, I sure hope I'm close. Thank you very much. We have Olivia. Marie, I sure hope I, I think, I, boy, I got all messed up in my counting. Daniel Hodge, thumbs up and thank you. Bobby is cool, greatly appreciated. Gibby 2.0, thumbs up and thank you. Critical Rays, greatly appreciated. And last but not least, Joshua Hummel. Thank you all so very, very much. <coughs> Indeed. You get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people. That is a definite thumbs up. Greatly appreciated. I have been clinically depressed while I've been going to therapy and doing a whole bunch of stuff and getting a whole lot better. That's still 35 plus years worth of damned up stuff that is suddenly flooding out. I've been having to deal with and distractions and other people are awesome. Thank you. Now, if you could check out my various links down below, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. If you'd like to help me out, but you didn't want to send money to one of those two places, I have a PayPal link down below if you wanted to check that out. That would be very cool. And if you wanted to help me out, but you didn't want to send money, I have an Amazon wish list link down below with things like cat food, hamster food, hamster bedding, silly things, not silly things. If you could check it out, that would be very, very cool. Now, do not feel obligated. I do not feel entitled. And if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them on the bank of my heart where I draw interest. Trust. So thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Definite thumbs up. And of course, if you could subscribe to the channel and <coughs> hit that bell, that would be very cool. Greatly appreciated. I would understand if you did not wish to, but if you are down with it, I will do my very best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time. Definitely a thumbs up on that. Which, end of time is a long time from now, so hopefully only like maybe the next 20 years instead of my body being propped up and forced to live like the Emperor in, you know, Warhammer 40k. Something like that. I would hate for people to have to, you know, be sacrificed a thousand a day just to keep my body alive as it rots in its corpse. Rot that, that's, that's, as my body rots as a corpse. There we go. Thumbs up on that. Well, <coughs> good Lord. I have this video that hopefully you've been watching. I have another video I need to edit and render. I've got something I need to record to edit and render. Got to stay busy in these trying times of self-isolation. So thumbs up on that. 
again this is very very true and again i'm also going to change it here in the next couple of days so no fear so you take care have a great day today i will see you on the flip side my friends and that is a very good thing definitely a thumbs up Thank <laughs> you.